What's up, modern steaders? We got good news. The concrete for the outdoor kitchen slab comes tomorrow. Woohoo! So we have a few things we need to do to get ready for that for tomorrow morning. Let's get to it. We're gonna be using six by six posts for our outdoor kitchen. They're rough sawn lumber. So we got these six by six brackets and to secure these to the concrete we need 5 8 threaded rod. We're going to be making the threaded rod we need to connect our brackets to the concrete. Sweet, that's already on there what we need. Alright, that's one less step we have to do. That's why you sleeve the nut on, so that way if there's a burr, you can use the nut and clean up your threads. One down, seven more to go. Don't forget to do that part first. Always unplug it first before you work on any of your power tools. Our cutoff wheel, we used it up too much. We got a nut back here to push in, and that'll keep that, it'll lock it. This piece we need. Very handy tool to have on the modern homestead. You can grind with it, you can use it as a cutoff wheel, you can use it as a wire wheel, you can do sanding with it. It's very invaluable. I've had this one since I've been in high school. And I, and I graduated in 2000, so I've had this thing for a long time. I believe this grinder cost me probably 60 or 70 bucks back then. And this thing has paid for itself over and over. So tools are definitely an investment to make here and there, and then you'll always have them, and next time you need to do a project, you already have the tool. That's how we built our house here.
Yep, that ends a little warm. Watch out! Now remember, that end is hot, so grab it on this side. We just learned that lesson, didn't we? The reason why I put a black X on all my threaded rod is I know that's the way the nut will thread on easy and I want that to be up and not buried in the concrete.
One more left. Yes. So 5 8 threaded rod and a map gas torch, it's doable, but whew, is it a workout? I'm telling you what, I'm hot. I'm glad we only have eight of them to do and they're all done now. I don't know if that was overkill bending my anchor bolts, but I just didn't think having an anchor bolt in a concrete slab only six inches thick was good enough. So I bent them so about halfway in the concrete is going to be that L. I pick one up and show you, but they're hot and I don't want to burn myself. And that L, the L will be halfway in the concrete, so that should give us something more to lock to. I feel better about that. Maybe it was overkill, but hey, I can sleep at night a little bit better. Now we just got to pick up, put all of our tools away before we're done. One little trick I like doing is I like labeling all my tools. I just put a piece of masking tape and write on it what there is inside that little case because I might know what the case looks like, but if I send Gina, Olivia, or one of my friends say, hey, go get me the grinder, they're not going to know which is which, whether it's in a red box or black box or what. They don't know the shape. So I just write the name of it on the side of it, grinder, sander, angle drill. So if I need somebody to come get me a tool while we're working, bada boom, bada bing. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Tomorrow's video is going to be a blast. The concrete truck is coming and we're going to be pouring our concrete slab for the outdoor kitchen. So exciting. It's all starting to come together. And then we'll be able to have hand-hewn farm here at the end of October. And we can do a butchering and charcuterie class here. I'm so excited. I've always wanted to learn how to make my own hams, bacon, and charcuteries. So that's going to be fun. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye.